Now we're going to talk about centrally acting alpha-2 agonists. Uh, remember alpha-2, there's alpha-1 and alpha-2. Uh, alpha-2 uh, also works in the brain. It increases your um, heart rate. Uh, works in the smooth muscles. That's where it is. And remember, agonist means you're stimulating. So clonidine's one of them. Clonidine helps with hypertension and it helps with pain. All right, so usually clonidine is uh, used if their blood pressure is high uh, because there's other drugs out there for just maintenance uh, blood pressure lowering agents. Now people can take clonidine on a daily basis. We, I do prescribe it, um, especially for people that have a hard time getting their blood pressure down and they're already on two or three different blood pressure medications. One thing I want to tell you about blood pressure medications, just because they're on two or three or two blood pressure meds doesn't mean that something is wrong with them. It just means sometimes every blood pressure medication works in different areas of your body and does different physiological uh, mechanisms. So many times they have to be on a couple, one to work in the heart area at a different receptor and the other one to work at a different area, such as your, your kidneys. So clonidine can also cause a slow heart rate because it actually slows down your heart and decreases your workload. So you can have a decreased cardiac output. So you have to watch out for that as a side effect. A lot of people don't like it because they get a dry mouth, a zero, a zero stomia with the mouth here. You can have rebound hypertension if you stop it. So it's with these medications, you really have to uh, slow it down or taper it off. It's like that for most blood pressure medications because imagine if something's working on your receptors and then it, you completely discontinue it, um, then you can have a rebound effect, meaning your blood pressure can go high, pretty high. Um, drowsiness and um, I haven't really heard too much of abuse. Methyl dopa is another one. It's similar, similar to clonidine, but remember it can cause hemolytic anemia. When you think hemolytic, see, thinking, break up the word again with medical terminology. Hema, blood, lytic, destroying. It destroys your red blood cells. It doesn't always happen, but someone with hemolytic anemia already really should not be on methyl dopa. So you get a Coombs test, it's called. It's a blood test. So you have to be careful with all these medications. Obviously, they're all, these are oral administration. Uh, you can do transdermal administration, meaning a patch. There's clonidine patches that people have out there. Also, we talked about um, the specific lab. Now I'm going to talk about adrenergic antagonists. What adrenergic, member we're working against now. So it's blocking the effects of the neurotransmitter. It's blocking alpha and beta receptor cells. So it's going to do the opposite or stop those um, chemical releases from happening. So it can lower your um, blood pressure. So there's alpha and beta. There's selective and non-selective. Remember, we discussed what that was in the other slides. So what are adrenergic antagonists? What are the effects? Remember, adrenergic antagonists, now we're working against, we're blocking. It's not an agonist, it's not stimulating, we're blocking the receptors. All right, so some effects of this can cause, now it's going to, remember, vasodilate. So you can get a little bit dizzy. Your blood pressure is going to go down. Reflex tachycardia means just say like you go from a laying to sitting position. Sometimes it can hit the nerve and cause a little tachycardia. Your pupils constrict, suppresses ejaculation, and reduces contraction of smooth muscles. So when you think of adrenergic antagonists, um, they are used sometimes for prostate issues uh, because it reduces um, the contraction. So it basically with the prostate in the bladder. Um, okay, let's. I'm going to draw a picture here. So you have your bladder here, and this is for men, and you have your prostate. Your prostate, actually, think of this as being behind the bladder. This is your prostate, and this is your bladder. It's not in the bladder. It's behind the bladder, um, and you have your urethra here that runs through. The prostate sometimes can become so large as you get older, it actually compresses oops compresses the urethra here and so then urine can't flow through 
from the bladder. So what these drugs do, this adrenergic antagonist, it actually makes it um, the bladder neck here. It like uh, relaxes the muscles. So hopefully the urine can just op it can open up that urethra and the urine can come out. So with that, what can happen is if it can suppress ejaculation because everything is so smooth and when you have ejaculation, it has to be constricted for that to come out because it's that force. And if things are dilated, what happens is you can uh, still have that, but it'll actually back up into the bladder area and not come out. And men find that obviously very uncomfortable. All right, so the effects of adrenergic antagonists at the receptors. You have adrenergic antagonists also in beta receptors. So it, remember, reduces, reduces. It constricts, contracts uterus. So we say alpha adrenergic blocking agents are a sin because, remember, it can block. So the, the blood vessels most affected um, is with, this is your uh, enlarged prostate. Uh, pheochromocytoma. Remember I talked about the kidneys. You have the adrenal gland sitting on top of that. Pheochromocytoma, you have an adrenal tumor. All right, so your heart rate can increase because it's not regulating um, the chemicals. So it can increase your heart rate more if there's a tumor on it. Rainouts, this is rainouts. You're not getting enough blood supply because your vessels are constricting. This is what people's hands look like. They turn purple, blue, white. It's actually um, quite common. Uh, and so we usually um, end up treating it with blood pressure or other blood pressure medications to um, help dilate the blood vessels so they can get more blood flow to the uh, extremities. They get it to their feet too. So what are some adverse effects with any blood pressure medication? Orthostatic hypotension. So when you're going from sitting to standing, laying, sitting to standing, you have to do that very slowly. That's a very good nursing uh, planning and intervention. Reflex tachycardia. Uh, when they go from sitting, lay, laying, sitting to standing, their blood, their heart rate can go up. You can get the constriction of your, um, actually, you can get the dilation of your nasal passage vessels, and you can get congestion, and then the ejaculation, which I talked about. All right, now we're going to talk about beta blockers. Beta blockers, uh, remember, beta adrenergic antagonists working against, so it's like, blocking the receptors. These are all of them right here. These are all examples. Uh, you will see probably all of these at some point in your practice. This is an, uh, one of the first ones. This is one of the first ones. There's also such thing as first generation, second generation, third generation drugs. These came out first. These came out second and these came out third. So Usually as we go on, um, like one of the, I believe um, bisoprolol, natalol is a first generation, but then like this nabivolol, the stalic is more of a second or third. I'm not sure which one, but it's made a little bit better with a little less side effects to it. So first generation usually has a little bit more side effects. It's more non-selective. Uh, it can hit multiple receptors in your body. Um, Whereas the newer ones uh, are made, you know, we've gotten better at making medications. It doesn't mean the old ones are bad, though. They're just as effective. Uh, beta blockers uh, are the beta adre blocker, beta adrenergic. So that's beta blocker is just an easy way to say it. So they block the beta adrenergic substances. What are those substances? Remember, it's the adrenaline, the epinephrine. And remember, it's in the sympathetic part of your nervous system. So if you block that area, those receptors at the sympathetic nervous system, uh, they relieve stress on your heart. So it slows down your heart rate. Uh, it slows down, it dilates your vessels, and it reduces the blood vessel contraction in your heart. So what I say in a roundabout way to patients that it reduces the workload of your heart. It rests your heart. 
and it also affects um, uh, mus muscle contraction or I mean vessel contraction in the brain and throughout the body. It reduces your heart rate, which I just said. It looks like these are on. So anytime you see a drug that says Olal, Illal, Elal, LOL at the end, think beta blocker, lulls. And that's how you're going to learn your blood pressure medicines. So ACE inhibitors, uh, you're going to see IL, I-L-I-L, um, enalapril, quinapril. When you see beta blockers, bisoprolol, natalol, um, metoprolol, when you see calcium channel blockers for blood pressure, it'll be urimlotopine, it'll be I and E at the end. What is it used for? Well, obviously it's used for cardiac issues. Um, this reduced perioperative mortality is kind of um, um, uh, debatable at this point. So we used to put everybody on beta blockers uh, before they had surgery if they had any issues like hypertension and stuff like that. But now we don't. If they're taking a beta blocker already, we don't take them off it. We just tell them to keep using it. Um, anybody that's had a heart attack, cardiac dysrhythmias, because remember, we're trying to reduce this workload of the heart. So if someone has chest pain, that's angina. All right, angina is the constricting of the blood vessels when it's not supposed to constrict, and they can have chest discomfort because they have heart disease. You give the beta blocker so it can relax those blood vessels. Um, surprisingly enough, it's also used for stage fright, particularly Indorol, because remember I said it works in the brain too, so it kind of relaxes everything and it can make you feel a little bit more relaxed and be able to speak in front of people. Also is used for heart failure. Um, they have to be used really carefully in heart failure though, um, just because of the, if it relaxes the heart too much, you don't want that to happen. And also migraines, um, it's been quite a few years now, at least 40 years that they've been using beta blockers for migraine prevention. Um, again, there's uh, debate whether migraines are neurologic or uh, more circulatory. So uh, they say by um, dilating the vessels will help um, uh, regulate or help decrease the migraines. Uh, some adverse effect, and I know we've talked about this before, beta blockers, remember, can cause bronchoconstriction. So while you're trying to help one thing, it could hurt the other. So anybody with asthma, COPD, or you just tell people when you're doing your teaching, think about your nursing process. Also, they can cause um, hypo, it really can cause masked, masked hypoglycemia. So someone has diabetes, you have to make sure that you check their blood sugar more often because they can have a low blood sugar and not even feel it because the beta, the beta blocker can mask the symptoms. And I um, must have jumped ahead because now I'm talking here about the first, second, and third generation, um, how they're, these are non-selective, these are cardio-selective, particularly for the heart, although you still have to worry about, with all of these, the adverse reaction um, of someone with asthma and COPD. Because remember, although it's cardioselective, it can still sometimes hit those other receptors in the lungs. Third generation, that also works on some vasodilation. Um, um, uh, more vasodilating properties. The beta blockers, uh, they bind to the beta receptor and they prevent it from binding to that. So here's some non-selective ones, carvedilol, pindolol, penbutalol. Carvedilol, you're going to see quite a bit out there. And I really have not, I don't think this is even used. What are some drug interactions? Sometimes if they take NSAIDs, it's not something that you say, okay, I'm not going to put you on an NSAID. Remember, an NSAID is ibuprofen, uh, Ibuprofen's one of them, aspirin's another one, uh, Celebrex, there's many of those out, out there, indomethacin, naproxen, which you'll learn about at a different time. Uh, doesn't mean you don't put them on it, you just know that that can happen. Increase effects with these medications here. Uh, these are works with the prostate. It also brings your blood pressure down. Um, remember, this is the alpha adrenergic drugs with the prostate. Um, atropine here dries things up, 
and also increased risk of hypoglycemia, which we talked about. And that is it.